It is another red morning in crypto. Uh, bears have remained in control overnight. We are still continuing to test this support that we have been at for the past few days. And we are still waiting for that sign of strength that could give us confidence for a move higher. So yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, same as usual, I will go over the Bitcoin chart. I will tell you what my thoughts are and we will then have a quick look at some altcoins. So yeah, starting here on the daily time frame. So last night we got this close below what I consider a very important level. So this uh, 56K area and this daily level, more importantly, is what I consider just to be a a big big level right now that price is chopping around and we need to get some confirmation from this of whether we are moving higher or whether this is going to break down lower so we had that initial sell-off and we got that close above which gave us this daily as yeah this is this is pretty a nice level at uh, one point yesterday going into the evening this also looked pretty good so we had this doji candle that was forming we reclaimed this daily but just as we got into the like the closed session and, and well the open session sorry um <clears throat> as we came into that we lost this daily and we got this close below which has helped to give us some continuation overnight back into areas of support so yeah i think it remains the same kind of thing as it was yesterday we're testing lower we're building divergences here um and just waiting for that sign of strength and for that short squeeze, that bounce, whatever you want to call it, to occur if it is going to happen. Uh, it's certainly not certain, but um, yeah, it seems for me still to be the more likely scenario that this does get a bounce uh, before continuation lower if we are to get continuation lower. Okay, so that kind of covers the daily. Let's go into the low time frames here and just have a look at what did happen overnight. So you can see yesterday, um, and I updated everyone in the group that I had taken along in this area, but I was taking profit up here on this VWAP. Uh, so this is where I hit my take profit. And we tried a few times to hold onto this daily Um and if we were to get this close up here, if we were to say close this day above the VWAP, above this daily level, above 56K, then things were looking all right there. But it failed as, again, like these bounces keep getting sold into, um, which is natural. You're like, this is what you would expect at this stage of with the market being how it is, is people are probably at this stage looking more for longs i don't think there's any value in shorting this anymore uh but with the amount of you then take profit up here um and again when you start to lose these key levels then again this can that that could be good value for <laughs> again another another short uh to take things lower so yeah like swing shorts certainly no value here for those uh from in my opinion uh swing longs it is that kind of thing that we are still we're still building uh the the argument for those long positions um cool so yeah when i updated everyone yesterday we were in this like local area of support so i had taken a long out here and i was looking eventually for this target of 59k i took profit here and i haven't been stopped out so that's the important thing here is I, i've not been stopped out of my position and i was able to add again lower at what is now these lows um and we have a bit of a a nicer consolidation forming here so if we just go and take a look at things then uh what have we got what's going on you can say this is looking a bit like a wedge uh yep so we have this we have this and we have our support here so yeah that starts to add to 
the bias that I still continue to hold that we are going to get a bounce here. Um, that's one thing. And also, this is one of the rare occasions that I then start to look at the oscillators and what they are doing. So what you tend to see, and I don't use this much, but after a big move like this, this is what I like to start seeing, is you start to go down onto these oscillators and look at the low time frames. And you can see that lower time frames start to spill into higher time frames on these moves. So for the first time really here, we've had these divergences forming. So we had some divergence here that was forming on these low time frames, and we had some here that was forming. So you get this low, you get this lower low, and then you get the low and the higher low on the MACD and the RSI together. I don't like it when we only get one of them because I don't really like these oscillators but I do start to look at them when we get them together alongside CVD divergence on the higher time frames uh, against the lows back here um, and it just helps to give strength to an argument so you see these forming on the low time frames and they start to spill over then onto these higher time frames so again we have this divergence forming so a low a lower low a lower low again and then we have a low higher low higher low here so on the 15 minute chart we're forming these divergences then we can start to look at say the hourly chart again we are forming these divergences so we have these lows we are coming back down to the same area and we are building divergences here and finally the one that i like to see the most is the four hour so we come into this, whatever you want to call it, this oversold territory. We have a really nice move down on the MACD and we are forming the divergences against these lows here. Um, so as this starts to spill over, it starts to show that the strength from the bears is waning. Um, selling pressure is, yeah, there's, there's less selling pressure going on, the sellers are exhausted, and we can start to look at a move higher at that point. So, uh, yeah, it's just a case of waiting for strength. The <laughs> Like we were saying yesterday, the, the, the safer trade at this point is waiting for a reclaim of this daily, and then looking up to... The monthly open our major major point of control that we have up here but then you do have the risk of not knowing quite where your invalidation is if you were to get in here that's like almost like a one-to-one -one if you're taking these as the lows uh you'd have to kind of look at vwap support you'd have to look at a bunch of other things to give yourself confidence which is why i like to get in while things are low uh rather than after reclaiming a level because yeah yesterday the safer trade would have been to wait for this reclaim and to go higher again and it it failed eventually so that's what caused the selling overnight um yeah this is why i <laughs> i think a lot of people know already now that i i like to build positions when we are low um, I'm not one that waits for a sign of strength because if you keep waiting for that, then you can go, oh, look, yeah, we've changed market structure here. Great. So then you long this daily level. And yeah, you, you may be here to take profit, but eventually it fails. You come back, you come into an area of support, you wait for a reclaim of this daily level, you have your back test, you could long that. It fails. So these, <laughs> this yeah this idea of kind of waiting for a sign of strength if you have a bias um or you have an idea of where things are to go then i do like to get in at the levels that i see as support because otherwise yeah otherwise you just run the risk of trying so many times to be like oh yeah i'm gonna wait for i'm gonna wait for a reclaim and it fails wait for a reclaim it fails whereas if at least if you're getting in down here or you're getting in down here, or you're getting in down here, then you know where your invalidation is, whether you're taking this low or this low. You know where your um, take profits are, and you can be, in, this, in these instances, you can be taking profit at this level. And you can start to build a trade out of it. 
So that was where I was. And my entry has now come down a little bit. Um, yeah, so I think that just <clears throat> covers for me uh, how, how I personally like to trade. Um, I'd rather be getting these lows and knowing my invalidation rather than waiting um, so much for a sign of, of strength. I can always compound higher up if I want to, but I, I stand to lose a lot less if uh, <laughs> if I'm buying in around these areas. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think that kind of covers things on Bitcoin again. Um, you know my position. It is a long. I am looking for 59K. And again, what do we have at this area? It is our monthly open, which you often see price gravitate towards throughout the month. And on top of that, from just about wherever you draw this point of control, so we are in a big range here, from wherever you draw it, our point of control is in this same area. So you can draw it from your highs, which for me is the range we're in. You can draw it from the lows, same level you can take it from this high same level and you can take it from this low same level so this is massive um yeah and that is why i will be closing this long position when we get up there and possibly looking for shorts to take us down to the lows of this range. Um, like, I'd love to see it bounce up here and reclaim and go higher. But, yeah, we have to be aware now that this is a really, really, really big resistance that will be coming up here. Um, and it's not going to be easy to break through that, so... I'd say if and when we do come up here, you don't want to be giving yourself too much long exposure. Um, that's when you look for the reclaim or you look for shorts and you can trade it down, back down into here. Or you can look for the low of the range, which is all the way down there. Uh, cool. So we have our targets. We have our long position from this 54k area. We are looking for 59k and we have our areas of support below, which is 51,500 areas, uh, 56k and of course 38 with other areas in between that could obviously give us a bounce as well. Okay. Yeah, I think that is everything I'd like to go over on Bitcoin this morning. Uh, let's take a look at the alts very quickly so I can keep this under 20 minutes so that it doesn't take an hour to upload. <laughs> Ethereum, same range. So we're still stuck between these two monthlies. Uh, nothing to really say there. And again, we are struggling with this daily level on Ethereum. Whoops, I don't want that. We want this daily. So this is the important support that I see. And on Ethereum, it's looking a little better. So we, we got this spike below. Again, we tested below and got the close above. So that's two closes above with wicks down below. And if we can do that for a third day, then same with Bitcoin as I would be looking for higher prices again. And then you can start to build your resistance on Ethereum. Uh, I do think Ethereum looks better overall than, than Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, this is a, a very important level. So I do think we need to get another daily close above before we can start looking higher. Uh, if this can't hold, then we are looking into this weekly for me as being 
the next area of support like we we didn't come into this area previously we haven't taken these lows so yeah 1900 would be the next area of support for me on ethereum um cool i'm also in the long on ethereum from yeah from like these lows anyway so this has been one that i've been building for a while and it's still fairly safe uh litecoin it's that monthly level again um <laughs> So how many times do I have to say this monthly is just the best level uh, to trade? And it's got so much, yeah, there's so much confluence here. Um, yeah, it, it's been attempting lower and it's not been closing below. So this is this change that you want to see. So on Litecoin, um, Previously, every time it's come above, it's come up to this red line. We've fallen all the way back down to this lower monthly. Like every, on every occasion, uh, we've we hit it. We came all the way back down. We hit it. We came all the way back down. We hit it. We came all the way back down. Uh, and then again, we've we've hit it here. And if Litecoin is to like really go on a nice run then this has to hold <laughs> this this has to hold here otherwise we're looking back down here again um if it does hold then i think that would be when we start to think about okay this red area is going to break sooner rather than later so yeah whether we get a change like a major change here on litecoin that we'll just have to wait and see um Yeah, you certainly wouldn't be shorting Litecoin when we're at this support. Like the time to short it was up here. And if you've seen any previous charts, I used to have labels on here that just said short hedge, long, take profit. So this was, would have been a short. You take profit on here and then you look for longs down here. You take profit and then you short again. And that's just how it has been going on Litecoin for the best part of a year now. Um Cool. At some point that has to change and whether this could be now, whether this can hold and attempt these highs again, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, if Doge is at the top again, I'm going to be angry. <laughs> it's uh, Doge is still going. Yeah, I'm in a short on Doge. Um, I'm fairly happy just to, to continue holding that so I managed to get in right at the highs here I've hit my take profit one um, yeah I think it would be insane if Doge continues at this point uh, everyone in the market I think was expecting today like 420 today um, to be like a one of those planned pumps so yeah, if you want to ruin the party for anyone holding Doge, then today is the day to do it. Today is the day to wreck everyone <laughs> who's thinking that this is going to go to a dollar. Um, you never know; it might still do it. But uh, we saw with XRP earlier in the year when Wall Street bets and all that tried to pump it. What what happened? Um, you get you get destroyed. So I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing my best to help. <laughs> if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. It's fine. I've hit my take profit one, so I'm okay. Um, we'll see what happens with that. I might I might actually add add to my short here. In fact, I think I will add to my short here because... Uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, mm, no, I won't add to my short here. <laughs> I won't. I might get stopped out, but we shall see. Um, other movers, AXS, whatever that is. This is the random pitchfork I drew on stream like ages ago, and it's still being respected. That's nice. Vet's still holding strong. Um, yeah, that's good. And yeah. 
yeah, I think it's just a case of the altcoins acro here coming into a nice area of support. Um, Algo, really important support level here. Uh, I think band was looking quite nice. Yeah, bands into our support zone. Um, BZRX into this nice area. Uh, KT, yeah, a lot, a lot of alts are in are in these interesting areas. And again, I have been, I did get some some new alt positions. Uh, this morning before I started this, so I, I will be able to go over those in the group. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not really too much point. And I, I think I'll do these in some separate videos today and maybe go over uh, various positions on altcoins and various setups on altcoins because we are, we have this morning come into some areas of still waiting on GRT, some areas of quite nice support on a few of the alts, which is cool. All right, um, yeah, we're at 20 minutes. I'm gonna leave it at that so that this can get uploaded and I will, yeah, I'll be updating people regularly throughout the day. Um, oh, we're moving up, okay. Yeah, cool, uh, in a long position, looking for 59K. Alts are looking of better value now, and we seem to be getting a nice little bounce. Yeah, here we go. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna upload this, and we'll see if by the time it's uploaded to YouTube, whether 56K has been reclaimed, and whether we can start looking for this move higher. So long, take profit, we'll definitely close up here, and if we do come back below, then I will get stopped below this low, which at this point I'm going to move up to here. So I can move my stop pro stop loss up to 53,400. Cool. All right. Cheers, guys. And I will see you in the Discord. Yeah. All right. Bye.